shall I? Yes. Okay, so um, thank you everyone. So today we are gonna read our chapter uh, five percent function, which is basically chapter 18 and 19. And um, yeah, so why fives? So now we have already seen and have been using fives along the way, but uh, suddenly at this chapter, we have um, the chapter on pipes. So uh, as we have seen, pipes are a powerful tool that can be used to express sequence of multiple operations. And also what they say, um, it is easier to read and understand, but uh, it's something that is arguable. Some people who are saying is confusing for uh, people that just get into R, but uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, all the tidy bars ecosystem is somehow uh, people they have different opinion, but uh, for me, I think um, uh, pipes is uh, a good um, way to concatenate sequence of instructions to uh, and it is there to read. And also, um, it comes from this package. What? How do you call this package? Magritte or what? Yeah. So it comes from this package, and um, fortunately, when we load our tidy bars, it automatically loads. So that's why whenever we use um, uh, pipes, uh, when we load tidy bars, we don't need to um, uh, specifically load this one as well. So, um, oh, oh, okay. So, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I have some uh, tweets how uh, that shows. Um, uh, pipes, some kind of memes there, but it's not mm -hmm. sure. I don't know, do you really have this kind of problem? I and mean, when I'm putting slides, some my pictures are not getting shown. Why do you really have that issue? I think sometimes, um, I, I don't really know why it happens, but a recompile could do, uh, could, could, could show them yeah. like that. Um, okay, but for me, I think, um, one thing I find that works is like I open the HTML file that generates. Mm. So when I open the HTML files, it works. But here, it doesn't work. I don't know why. Uh, Hava, do you know why? No, not really. If you want, you could recompile and try again, but I don't really know why. Oh, okay, All right, it's okay. Oh, let, me, yeah, let, let me see if I can, oh, but let's go going, it's okay. Yeah, so. Um, there are many Python alternatives that we can follow, which uh, basically use uh, to achieve the same thing. But uh, Python brings alternative way in which you can do things faster and also more readable. So the first one is um, saving intermediate states, and the second one is overriding the original and using function composition. So let's look at this. So, so intermediate states. So for instance, we have these instructions down. For instance, we have these instructions, the first one, second one, and third one. So as you can see, we have, uh, we have been saving this one and we call it here. We save it, we call it in the second. But this one is um, has different kind of disadvantage that um, is cluttered with unimportant name. This doesn't make any sense. These names and uh, we increment the suffix on each line. So here we increment, and this is front error, and uh, you can obviously make error. Uh, yeah. So that's one disadvantage of these, and the second one override the original. So the same thing with that one, but uh, here you just override the. Um, the previous one you just override, but this is also front error. Uh, debugging will be very difficult. I mean, if um, the variable one variable is reported that uh, it's not um, um, it's not defined or is something uh, the value is not, you can really differentiate which variable is uh, buggy. So that's another thing. Um, the, the the last one is um, using function composition. So you use function to actually iterate so the names to solve the problem uh, but this one is hard for human consumption that is summarily so and um, the best alternative is to use five uh, so pipes solve all those problems that we see um, it basically takes one from each step and 
be from one another. So, but um, as also in the book, they made mention uh, pipes didn't work for two classes of functions. Uh, one is the, the function that use current environment, as we have seen in, um, in, in the example uh, in the book, you see the example where they assign, it doesn't work. So all the functions that use current environment, you can use pipe with them. And also um, all the functions that use lazy evaluations, they don't use um, uh, pipes. So these are two phenomena that we see in functions that uh, uh, lazy evaluation and also uh, what environment is. So yeah, so these are something in function environment. And so if functions uh, use lazy evaluation, some of these, I mean, five, it doesn't work. So when not to use the five. So despite the fact that pipes bring us many advantages and easier to read or write code, there are disadvantages in it. One is pipes are longer than 10 steps. If you have many steps that are more than 10, then consider breaking those steps into sub steps. And um, when you have multiple inputs, so if you look at this one here, uh, maybe we have only uh, one or two input, one input uh, here, but uh, whenever you have many input or output, so you consider also breaking down the pipe. And also um, pipes, they are sequential structure. I mean, something that built based on sequence, the result is imputed to the next step. But when you are thinking of something like uh, graphs, so we know graphs have different sub branch, something that goes to the one side, it's not in sequence. So if you have such kind of complex structure, I mean, five is not suitable to you. So uh, five is only suitable when you have sequence of uh, phenomena, sequence of instructions that you don't, you want to concatenate together to get results. So that's when pipes really helps. Um, so other tools in this package that as Hadi made mention, and the one I find useful is this. I mean, I understand is this, um, this symbol. What do you call this symbol? I don't know what it's called. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but um, it's obviously used to, uh, uh, instead for us to do this two thing, to assign the same variable, so we can use that this one. But uh, Hadley also um, made mention that uh, this is not really uh, friendly because um, this is more sense to see that you assign new value to uh, variable and we work on your data. There are also other tools in this package, but this is the one <coughs> that I see that uh, is most uh, useful that can be used in some ways. Yeah, so that is all about uh, pipes. Uh, then the next chapter is, um, I, I don't know, if, uh, do you, there, are there any questions uh, with pipes? The chapter, I, I didn't even check. Uh, no, there, there are no questions there, really. Oh, okay, no questions, okay. All right, oh, okay, no questions, okay. Mm. All right, so functions, so why functions? So, they say functions allow you to automate common tasks in more powerful and general way than copying and pasting. So, yeah, so, um, as we have seen the books, you may write the same thing many times, but when you have a single function that can automate that tax, then you better use a function. So, and these are some of the advantages of the function. Use function names to make your code easier to understand. So, uh, for instance, if we have a function that can add two values or that can add n numbers, so we can create a function with the name add, and that add actually reflect what the code is doing, is adding some numbers. So that's why use function names to make your code easier to understand. Number two, change code at one place if need of change comes. So um, uh, this is also one of the powerful things with function that uh, really helps. So if we have a function that basically do some kind of addition, for instance, this one, the name of, uh, is addition and uh, we have different places that we use this function that add many values. 
So we cannot go to uh, each place to make changes. We can make changes where we do the function definition. So this is called function definition here. We define the function and in other subsequent places, we just call the functions. So all you need to do is, if we want to make changes for a particular function that we use in a program, uh, for instance, we use the function in 10, 100 times, we don't need to go to different places, 100 places to uh, make the changes. What we need to do is to only go to where we define the function and make changes. And also the side what eliminate the chance of making incidental mistake when copying and paste. So this is also one of the advantage, as I said, you don't need to go to 100 places to copy and paste and that's change. only make change. And so this actually prevent incidental mistakes uh, that you can be able, that you may make. So when should you write a function? So you should consider writing a function whenever you have copy and paste block more than twice. That is when you have that thing three times, that's what I hardly recommend. This is not something that uh, universal, I mean, as of the better, this is um, opinionated as well. So when you have uh, the same similar code that do exactly the same thing three times in your code, then you better write a function to do that thing. And also for us to do uh, now create a function. There are three key steps to creating a new function. One, pick a name of the function. Two, provide the argument of the function inside this function keyword and place code in the body of the function inside this. So pick a name. So this is a name. This is a function. This is the name of the function. Provide argument. So this add argument. The, I mean, the argument are actually the variable we want to work on a function and play the code inside this. So then after this, then you play the code that you want to be executed inside this one. So uh, you see, uh, we place this code, which is basically addition. So this is a function that basically do primarily add two variable with uh, anything X and Y to it. Yeah. So there are three things that a function must uh, uh, um, uh, must uh, abide by, but also uh, in this chapter, uh, I mean, in other books, we have um, other functions that uh, they may not exactly have these structures, uh, but for now, this is uh, basically what function is. Uh, those functions are called, is it a, synony a synonymous function or what they are they called? Yeah, something like that. So let's go on. Yeah, so this is one of the principles that uh, actually uh, say that you write function because you may be able to make mistake more often and more likely to create a bug in your code. So that's why we say DRY drive. Do not repeat your sub principle, DRY principle. Always automate the tasks you have with writing functions. Okay. Um, so the next section we talk is functions are for human and computer. So this is basically um, a section that discusses uh, some principle that allows your code to be readable for humans. It's not um, some technical concept, just some advice and suggestion while writing your function. So the first one is functions should have name that reflect what they do. Because for instance, when we see here, this is a function called addition or add anything. So whatever you are doing inside this block, make sure in some way the name here reflects whatever you are doing inside here. That what they mean. Functions should have the name that reflect what they do. They should be small. Yeah, so functions should be at, uh, small. If they are not small, you can use um, what they call um, uh, Camel case to actually, uh, uh, not camel case, snail, snake case, right? Is it called snake case or something? Yeah, snake case, right? Yes. So. Yeah, function name should be verb. So uh, always we should remember, uh, uh, try to uh, uh, use the function for instance here. This is addition, so we can use the name add to name this function add. 
that's what they suggest, but that's not the, yeah. So always function name should, uh, function name should be bar. For longer names, we can use snake, snake case, right? Yeah, this is snake case. Ca camel case, is it? No, 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 this is a camel case, right? Yeah, have... yeah, that's right. The other one is, is the snake case. Yeah, so camel case is also you, but be consistent what you use. So for instance, this is a snake case where we have all small letters, each word that was called and but this one the first letter small and the subsequent words are with capital letters. So uh, what this suggests is that be consistent in what you do. Nothing that is um, so strict that you must follow. Uh, but what they need is just consistency. It doesn't really matter which one you pick. The important is just to be consistent. So this is what this section is telling us that. Uh, functions are for humans that uh, you should try as much as possible to do something that all people agree with so that you, even if you write code someone just saying your code will understand what you mean so if we have some kind of guidelines it will ease code sharing so that people will not uh, be somehow amused what you do okay so again we're writing function if you have some functions that do uh, i mean collection of functions that do similar tasks, name them consistently, use prefix. So for instance, we have functions that do select, for instance, checkbox, use prefix to give them names rather than, uh, uh, I mean, use suffix, yeah, prefix, not suffix. So for instance, this one can use, this is a bad example, they use uh, prefix, but, if you have something consistently, you can use R Studio Future, where you, as you put input, it will give you all the family functions related to that thing, so that you can just easily select what you want to do. For instance, as they give an example using stringer function. So all the functions in stringer, they start with str underscore and all other functions of the stringer function. So um, this is a good example to see uh, what you do. So this is also uh, uh, guidelines that uh, people are advised to follow so that uh, um, uh, you should have consistency in what you do. So also, it is also advised that you should use comment at the start of your function. Um, what this means is that uh, at the start of your function, use comment. So this is a function that we already see, which is addition. So before here, before you write any code, the moment you call this, before you write any code, put some statement why the functions. Use comment at the start of your function to explain why of your code. That's why you see in many functions, you will see some kind of co I mean, some kind of comment immediately after opening brace, you see some code. Maybe they can be one line, two line, three line, five line. It depends on how large the function is. So that's one thing. So you use comment at the start of the function to explain why the call. That's another uh, guideline to use for function. So sometimes, um, uh, functions, we can have um, conditions inside a function to execute. For instance, here, we may have condition inside this function that uh, if it satisfies some condition, it executes something. So, uh, but uh, the condition must be evaluated to rule. These are also uh, some things to consider when using if statement. The condition inside if must be evaluated to rule. Because if execute only if the result is logical, that is, it is false or true. So if it is a better, as we see in the book, you may get an error message. But you can use O and AND to concatenate, to combine multiple logical expression by what is called shed circuit. And this allow us to combine multiple operation or multiple statement. For instance, we can say if A is greater than B, or A is equal to two, something like that, or and, 
as you see in the next slide, I think. And also they made uh, questioners uh, that uh, we should be very careful when using testing of equality, that this thing sometimes is not perfect. So you should only use near when you want to compare some kind of uh, integer or I mean real values. Sometimes if you want to compare real values, it's better to use near, which is part of tidyverse. I think is it in tidy R. Yeah, something like that. So these are something to consider when using a conditional statement in functions. Uh, you see, for example, here, if we look at this one here, this is a single um, if statement. If uh, if it is true, only the uh, statement is executed, but we can have multiple conditions. Uh, this is an, one example, for instance, if we have this, we can have else if, and we can have else. So this is actually um, uh, concatenation of if. The only if is used for one condition, but if you have multiple condition to test, then we can use else if. So if you look at this, we have the first else if, and we have open press. The else if, the next else if, we have the condition as well. And you can see this condition, and they said um, it's binary condition, which is true or false. And also, if you look at it, um, the open breast of the, 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 the open breast start here and the open breast start here, the closing one. So this is considered, I mean, the good format. Always have this way in each if. The first if you have the open breast and the subsequent else if they should have be in this structure where they have the closing at this side, the opening, and also and up to the last one. So if you look at this one, this is testing that uh, if this, if this, and this, or this. So, but if we have very long ser series of changes if statement, you should consider writing it. Uh, so, but what if we have this thing maybe 10 times? Should we continue using else if, else if, else if? Yeah, so you may choose to do that, but I want a uh, useful technique or useful alternative to use a switch. A switch is an alternative for multiple condition that is better than the if else statement. So this is an example of switch. For example, we have a color, um, we have a function called color and we input the color here. And um, when we input the color, uh, we can have a switch here. This is a format we can have the switch and we have what we input here and we can have if the color here is red, then if this is what will be executed. If the color is this blue, this is so yeah, this is what will be executed. And the last one we can have stop here. So basically, what this switch is, if you look at this one here, we don't have these multiple if else, multiple if else. Here we only have one switch, only one switch, but we put the condition the host true. So if this is true. If this is true, then all the subsequent one will not be executed. If this is true, if this is true, then all other ones will not be. The moment it reaches the true condition, what is here is executed and all other ones are not executed. But there are some conditions which are called false through, uh, which it actually uh, executes more than one condition. But uh, if all the condition here doesn't hold, it will. Um, actually use the last one here that we specify, which is called stop, which um, uh, used to here to provide uh, that you say there is no invalid uh, operation here. And so any question here before we move on? No, just a comment. I guess this is like base R version of case when in dplyr. Sorry? Hello, Hava, you say what? I was saying that this is um, very similar to the case when function in dplyr. Ah, okay. Ah, all right. I'm not even aware of that one. Okay, so in dplyr there is uh, one called case, right? Oh yeah, case I remember. When, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I but it's just that I think here the the, the only thing um, I don't understand is when you have a stop. So, for example, if you input color is equal to yellow in this case uh -huh. um, 
does it return to, to return an error? Please provide valid color name, right? No, because uh, you have a yellow as well, right? No, here, you mean if oh, you- Oh, no, some, something else, sorry, like, like black. Right. Yeah, if you write black, nothing will be as good as so. What switch does is that when you have the input, then it will run through the options mm. and matches the one that is true. So if he input here, uh, black, this is the function, right? So this is a function we input, our uh, input here is black. So we're gonna use switch here. Switch is multiple selection structure. Is there is nothing connected with function with switch, but we want to use switch inside a function. So we in, get an input from the function, which is color. And now in switch, in switch, you must have a variable that you're going to compare with all other cases, which is what we get from the function. So this is it. So now what to switch will do is it will run through all these different cases that you have and compare what is equal to here. If this is black, if we input black here, it will, it will get, if this black, if, it, if this thing is not black, it will not execute this one. Hmm. If this is not black, it will not execute this one. If this is black, if this is black, it will return this one and it quit. But if we input something which here is black, and here, so here, uh, black the variable. And here, over here, there is nothing like black. So it will not return anything. But the last option is to stop and generate something with, that isn't, that is nothing that um, satisfies the condition. Right? Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm, I'm good. Okay. So um, also, the sometimes, sometimes this is, if you look at it here, this is a switch as well. So switch here. So what do you mean by this one here? Switch, if you provide uh, the first digit here, if you provide the first argument of switch is an integer or a real number, then it will select the argument, the subsequent one. So if this is two, it will select this one. It will return this one. Can you see that? So here we have switch. We put two here and we call the S, it will give us green. So here, if we have switch one, it will turn red. But what if we don't have up to five, it will turn nothing. Okay. Also here, we have a switch color. So here, you can use string instead of a real number. So this is another alternative. If you look at this one, it's the same here. Look at, you can see this one here, the structure here. We put it in one line, but here we put it, can you see it? Not in one line. Can you see that? So if you look at one here, we put the color, this is the variable we, we want to check. So can you see this one here? We use comma, can you see here? Can you see here? But uh, if you look at the previous one here, the difference here, you can see that here, there's nothing like string, right? So, but here, because we call it a string, this is a string, right? So that is why we compare here, it's a string. It is, so it return what the value, it return the value of the color, which is red. So, so, so basically what they are telling us here is that uh, inside a function, we can have, uh, I mean, multiple selection that um, actually allow us to do many things inside a function. So this is a good style code uh, that we need to follow at the suggest while using uh, uh, multiple statement. As I made mention, like um, if you start, if here, you start and the closing one here and the, something like that and if else here. So this is a good style of code. And this is bad style. So if you look at one here, um, this is even one line. So if you look at the one, this one here, because what we executed is only one line, we didn't put open breaks and close break, uh, brace. But it's always advisable if you have, even if it is one line, to put it. It's a good style, but it doesn't make any 
difference. Also, if you look at this one here, we put if we put the close uh, open brace and here we put the close brace here, it is not uh, put here. So this is a bad style. So it's supposed to be here somewhere here. Can you see that? So this is a good style that they say. Yeah. So um, as I made mention, um, one liner, um, um, if you basically have, um, uh, I mean, small chunk of code, you can actually um, have one line to uh, just put it, but uh, this is also not advisable, but because people at this look at your code, they need to figure out, okay, you did, but if you put it at the, the way it is advised, so that's one is also much better. So, um, all right, I think this is what I have here. Uh, <laughs> I stop at this one here. So, um, all right. So I think uh, 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 from the chapter, uh, I think, uh, Yeah, so we, this is what we have seen, conditional argument, multiple condition, uh, code style. So the next one is uh, function arguments. Yeah, so I think what we should do, uh, uh, I do have it, I was like, um, uh, just copying and pasting it uh, uh, in my slide, but uh, I didn't finish that, but I have it in R down in my R studio, so we can uh, quickly go through, I think, as well. Yeah, right. I can. Shamsuddin? Yes. Can I, can I say something? If yeah, you, sure. If, if you go to, to, to the book for a bit. Yep. Uh, so if you go to multiple conditions. Right. Up there, that, that example. Uh, um, this one? No, slightly up. That one, that one, yeah. So I, I think th th this this one makes me um, conceptualize the the need or the use for switch. Mm -hmm. So for example, if I, uh, it's so clear for me because if, if I have a function that has two inputs x and y, and uh, I have the operation that someone wants to do, and they can choose between plus minus time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. whatever, mm -hmm. yeah. then you know it, it's very easy for me to see that uh, if someone picks um, plus. You do you do an addition. If you pick uh, minus, you do a subtraction. Yeah. And if it's none of the four that you have there, then it's like an error. Yeah. So this is an this one is you can see is a, a, an example. I do, I just choose not to use it because like um, it just this one depict that uh, you must have uh, input. You must have the variable that are using calculation here, mm. but. It doesn't matter that uh, a switch is just a selection operator that um, based on what is here, you can have only this, it is sweet. Uh, so the purpose is, okay, so if you look at um, if else, uh, so where is uh, if else? Okay, this is if, right? So if you look at this one here, if it only check the condition, what is a condition and do something like this. Else if, what is the condition and do something like this. So also here, switch, what matters is the condition. Mm -hmm. This is only operation you are doing here. Do you understand what I mean? This is just only operation, the y, on, the y x and y you provide are just, are just only value, but you are not comparing them. They are not part of switch. Yeah. But what is part of switch is the condition you are, that is why multiple condition. You understand what I mean? So this one is just you can have different scenarios to put the switch but the main important thing is you want to have multiple conditions as to choose from those conditions you know what i mean so uh the the important thing is that you must have one argument one value inside the function one thing one that you will put here so anything can come here come inside but uh, that thing also you, uh, that comes here is something that you be comparing from here if those things are true. So the operation if we took plus here is something. That's why the previous one, uh, the example we have, uh, I show is like a color. 
then you have color here. So if the color is red, you out do some operation here. So those things that here, I, I put uh, it just something. So yeah, so it just depends on the use case scenario, I think, right? How about, what do you say? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we have some exercise as well. Yeah, okay. So um, I think I have my, uh, if for us to go to the book is a little, uh, because I have my notes, <laughs> it will be easier for us just to go through it. I can mm -hmm. carry us along. Uh, all right, I think, um, yep, yep. So this is what I have, which is a function argument. So I, I, was just co I was just copying and put them in the slide after reading, but, uh, and remove another series stuff after being, <laughs> yeah. So uh, the next thing is function argument. So um, as we have seen like um, in functions, we have many things. The first one is we need to select the name of the function and also we need to specify the argument and also we need to specify the content. So this thing is the function argument. So um, this, the function argument must be in two things. One that supplies the data to compete on and the other that supplies argument uh, that control the details. So if we look at this one here, for instance, uh, string, we have latest collapse here. So this is a function string and this is one, this is the part that actually control what we supplied. We supplied latest here. So if you look at them here, you may have a function without the, this second part, but the function must have one set supply the data to compute on. Oh, I think you can, have, uh, you can have a function with one of them. You can have a function with even without the first set of the data, but you have the default value. Yeah, so also this is another thing, okay? Let's look at this example. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, yeah, so uh, what is saying here is that um, they want to bring the notion of what is called um, uh, default arguments. So let's, ex uh, for example, we have a function here, full bar, and we have a function and we have two arguments, X and Y, and basically it does addition. So what this means is that um, this one, the default argument we have here, can be used if we do not provide second argument. So if we call this function here, full bar, we have only one argument three, so it will use the value of y to be one. But if we provide the value of uh, second argument to be two, it will override the, se the second, the default one. So this is what they are telling us here. Um, a function can have arguments and those arguments can have different values. So the different value that can be overwritten. So, but if it is not provided, then uh, the default one will be used. Um, also, uh, there's also the thing they call using name of data argument when calling function. Uh, so what they are talking about here, for instance, now we have a function called min. So if you look at them here, we only assign value the of the variable and they call this uh, NARM true. This NARM means, um, what does it mean? Is it include, uh, 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 what the value, what the meaning of NAR.RM? Include. Um, it's to remove NA values. Yeah, remove NA, yeah, yeah, remove NA, remove NA. So if you look at this one here, this is good way we call, uh, function without explicitly, uh, explicitly providing the argument's name. So this is a bad way in which we say x is equal to this. And um, if we look at, the, oh, okay, if you look at this one here, we say the false. So what this means is that by default, by default, this function means it is providing a false, right? Uh, it is not removing. So uh, you don't need to provide false. So what they are telling us is that um, the name of the uh, argument should not be, ex it's not necessarily that we uh, uh, put it explicitly. 
are, are uh, also yeah. one thing they made me. Uh, yeah. Though, though, so it's 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 always tricky for 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 one to to know what not to name uh, explicitly. At least the first argument is okay. Normally, it's always like the data input or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then the other inputs, if for you not to name them, you need to make sure that they're coming in the in the right order. Yeah. So what this means is that um, whatever function you are working on, I guess um, you know what they are. What they are. So for instance, now here, if you look at, yeah. So. If you look at this one here, uh, the order, I think uh, the first one is always the value, right? So we provided mm -hmm. it. And uh, uh, here we said uh, it's true, we provided it. Uh, but if you want to put them not in the order, that is why I think, um, which is not a good idea, that is why you need to explicitly, for instance, this one here, we do not provide it at the first argument. We said x is equal to this. Can you see that something like that? I think I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I think what they are saying is like um, uh, we need to use them in sequentially. That is when we do. Yeah, and and that's right. When we do not put the name of the argument, if we put them the way they are, uh, the the function is, then you don't need to put the name of the argument, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Um, then the next thing they talk is choosing names of functions. So, uh, yeah, um, choosing names uh, in arguments, not a function. So they make mention of this, um, uh, which is uh, obvious we have been using. So whenever we have uh, our functions, uh, uh, those arguments, there are some kind of preferable way of choosing the names. So. Um, X, Y, something like that, vector's name. This, um, yeah, this is length of the vector row, number of columns, so all this we have been using. So these are some standard they advise people to be using. Okay, so there is way to check values. So sometimes we want to make sure that the argument we supply to the function is right, right? So checking this thing is what is called defensive programming. And it encourages us to frequently check condition and throw an error if something goes wrong. That is called defensive programming. So for instance, now we have a function here, find magnitude, and the function we have the x. But this x, as you know, is the argument we are talking. Here we are talking about argument, function argument. But you want to sometimes make sure that the argument is what you expect the user input. So here we want to check the magnitude. It's a function that check the magnitude. If something is positive, it output, okay, positive number, uh, non-negative. If it is negative, it's a negative number. So, so uh, when you have your function in defensive or checking the code, we do something like this. We check the argument if it satisfies conditions. So the moment you define the function, immediately you check if it satisfies the thing. So if X is not is equals to zero, then we can use top list. No zero is allowed, input other negative, uh, another number. So you see, if we run this, where well, this thing is doing this for me. <laughs> yeah, so if we run this, uh, as you can see, I put an example here, we put zero, it will uh, throw this error that uh, you need to stop and, uh, uh, impute another number which is not zero. So that's called uh, checking, that is the checking value. So when they say checking value, they are basically talking about checking value of the argument to make sure that it satisfies the condition. Uh, another one they talk about is, um, oh yeah, so this is also the same thing. Uh, but also the one they talk about is stop if not. So, uh, I'm not quite sure I fully understand this one stop if not, what it does. Can anybody jump in? Can anyone jump in? Yeah, I've never used that one, but. Yeah, 
So, but it's more like testing if they're not equal, basically. Yeah. yeah. So, if you look at this one, so this if stop, we use to check only one value. Uh, so, stop if not is used to if you have multiple conditions to check, right? Um, I, I not fully understand how it works. Maybe we can check it after. No, it's it's a. Uh... So uh, it's normally used like if if you're doing like uh, unit testing, okay. For example, and for example, if 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 you you know the value of of x that you're calculating and it's supposed to be uh, two, and that that's that's your true value. But in your function, you you're trying to calculate the the value of x as as you know x in this case is equal to one. So oh, you're okay, going to yeah. see whether your function actually returns the true value of ah, I two. See. Okay. Okay. Ah, okay. Okay, I see. So, so, um, uh, so it's not the same. Of, it, it's not the same at this one in that case, right? This one is to check the argument if it satisfies some condition, right? Using if not, if stop. Yeah. This, yeah. This, but, but, but for example, you could actually write the same thing using yeah. the if function if you use like yeah. equal equal to. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But this is the most easier way, right? Yeah. Much so, much better. Yeah, so this one is like if you precondition, you already know the value of something. So you want to make sure that is that thing is equal to the, that thing, right? Mm, no, yeah, it could be like that, or some there are some other use cases. Okay, cool, cool. Um, so dot dot. So we still um using argument. Don't forget we are still using function argument. So um, in function argument, they are using dot dot. So dot dot is a situation that capture any number of arguments. So, right. So if we have a function here, dot 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 here, and uh, we have a function here, string dot dot collapse this. What this do is that when we have uh, any uh, thing that here, it will actually put that thing here and collapse it with this. So uh, I don't know why I'm, I don't want to mess with this thing. Yeah, so um, uh, we already we know that uh, what this dot dot means is that uh, we can have a function. Is it for us to have the argument value, but we are not sure how many argument are. So we can use this thing, and uh, it means many. I mean, undefined number of argument. So it can take any number of argument. That's what it does. Oh. And also, I have not understood the lazy evaluation. Uh, okay, yeah, um, they made mention that um, uh, to understand it is um, in, it is explained well in uh, advanced R. So, can anybody jump in and is explain lazy evaluation? No, I haven't reached that part for the advanced R book. <laughs> so right. I don't understand it. All right. Okay. So, um, so the. the Another part of um, uh, function is return value. So we can return value of argument of a function either in two ways, explicit return or implicit return. So what we mean by implicit return is that um, when you have a function, this is a function, we have the same thing, but um, we may decide to return a value uh, without the function exist, uh, finish. So uh, in the here we have, implicit so what do we mean by implicit the function return the last value that is implicit we don't uh, define any return statement so if we have here this is a normal function so if this condition hold it will print this one that's what will be returned if this hold it will return this one nothing more if this hold it will return this one this is called implicit you do not explicitly define return function return statement inside your function but you can explicitly define return inside your uh, function so in this case as you can see uh, here so if x is equal to zero return please zero is not allowed so in this case we return from here and you can see nothing here will not be executed so they say the common way the common uh, situation where we use explicit is like if you have multiple the x for instance the else fat is something fewer code 
But the, if, if else part is something that with large number of calls, so you can just put the other for else part that uh, with smaller code with return and the other for that has uh, uh, a large number of code at the last part of the code. So in a nutshell, what explicit and implicit does is that explicit, we specifically uh, 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 define the return of what we want to return without allowing the function to finish completely. All right, so yeah, so this is what they say. Another reason is because you have if statement with one complex block and one simple block, that is the reason why you can use an if. So if you look at this one, we have a function and we have an if statement. This is a simple code, simple uh, uh, code. But the else part here, the other part is having larger number of codes. So you can just put the part with short code at the at this one and return its result. So that is that for that. Um, um, and the last part is called writing. Are we up to, oh, yes, we, 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 we reached our time, but I think this is the last part, which is writing pipeline functions. All right. So um, this section uh, uh, is talking about um, how can we write functions with pipes. So, they say there are two basic types of pipeable function, transformations and side effects. These are two things. But transformation is the one in which we actually modify the object inside the function. But the side effect is the one that we do not actually modify the function, but we perform, the function performs something on the object, like drawing at the say also so, uh, saving a file. So for instance, if you look at this one here, we have what is called a function called show miss, missing. And uh, we have a data frame here, and it checks if the data frame there is any uh, uh, NA in it. And if, that, if there is any NA, it, what it does is uh, it count the number of missing NA of NA, and and cut it. I mean, print it, and we have what is called invisible DF. So what this means is that uh, if you look at this one here, our data frame here, we have not changed the data frame. So this is not transformation, but side effect in the sense that we do something that actually does not affect the data frame. So in this one here. We can use what you call five. We can use invisible uh, function here. It means our data frame is key intact. Nothing touches it, but we do some stuff on it. So let's look at what is it. If you call interactively invisible, means that the input does not get printed out here. So if we have uh, show missing cast here, oh, cool. I think we need to go to the, oh, okay, let me open here. This is not, so, uh, yeah, so this is what they mean here. So if you look at this one here, we have these things show missing. So this show missing in this data frame here we have, there is no missing, there is no NA. So when we call the function show missing, we uh, give a, a particular data frame here, then show missing is zero, it means there is no NA in it. But what happens to our data print? But it's still there, it's just not printed by default. So if we call this one here, show missing, we assign the value to X and we call it here, class of X, can you see it is data frame? And dim of X, we have it. So what is showing here, the data frame here is not printed, but we only print some messages, something that we do on it. But our data frame here that we acted is still intact, nothing touch it. If we, if we can do another operation on the data frame. Yeah, that is it. Uh, so this is a, the given example where we have the same thing. So in that case, we can do pipe operation because our data frame is nothing changed in our data frame. It's still the same data frame. We only do some action on it. We do not tamper with it and it's still there. So we can do pipe operation in it as example they show here. Can somebody add more explanation here? Oh, we are four minutes more. All right.
So the last one is, um, what they do not explain is what is called environment. So in our, what basically environment is, that uh, is talking about where your value is, which is called lexical scoping. So um, for instance, we have a function here and we have X only, there is no Y. So, but here inside we have X plus Y. So now where does Y come? This function inside this function, that is where the environment of this function is. But inside this environment, there is no, Y is not defined. So if we want to use any variable that is not defined here, what R is, does is what is called lexical scoping. It will go to higher environment. So we have a child environment, we have, I mean, the father or mother environment. It will go outside this environment to see if Y is defined. So this is an example here. We have y is equals 100 here, and we have f10. So here we call f10. So here this function here, it will go outside this environment that we have here and see do we have y? Yeah, which is 100, it will use this and this. Also here, which is 1000, and y is not defined with, within this environment here. So it will go outside the environment. So that is what is called in the environment, which is called lexical scoping but uh, it's not explaining details. It's only, um, uh, there are many tricky things with uh, environment, but uh, it's explained as they said in the advanced art books. So the only takeaway in environment is that if your argument is not defined within a function, then it will look to outside environment, bigger environment. It will look to the bigger one, bigger one, until it goes to the last environment and see if that variable is defined with its value and use it. That is what is it for environment. I think that's uh, last part of this chapter. So we are six minutes ahead. Um, so uh, thank you. Any question or any more details? Not from me, thank you. Alain. No, 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 I don't, I don't have anything. I will yeah, so, so sorry, we went past six minutes past this week's right time. So, yeah, so thank you. I think um, we can uh, have uh, the recording end here.